good because we're rolling oh we're rolling on a river always Always. big wheels keep on turning turning proud mary keep on burning exactly Mm -hmm. um one time i hi shay oh hi brie how are you i'm good how are you doing i'm brie this is shay and we're 30 ish all the time because we're in our 30s there it is and this is our podcast Mm -hmm. um sure is yeah anyway now i forgot what i was gonna tell you you don't remember either great I thought, you, I thought you were saying something about whitney houston but i don't know oh no uh i don't even remember <laughs> perfect it probably would be a really good story great no it's fine you'll remember it when you need to remember it remember it that's like so that happens to me a lot it's Again, I, need to s- I know i like to blame that like if i'm on like on my 30s but no. It, it's I, it's always been a thing for me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, it's for my dad. I'm he just, forgets things a lot. I'm just a natural dip. Not in the middle of my sentence, though. Like, that's what happens sometimes. What the fuck was I going to tell you? You'll remember in matter. mid-story, and then you'll go off on another tangent. It'll be great. And then I'll forget what I was talking about before. Mm-hmm. It'll be perfect. True. Well, fuck. Anyways, it was anyway, not important. How fun. are you? I'm good. Still on the mend. But yeah. good. Are you getting uh, more used to your boot? Unfortunately, yes. And You're I'm like, like oh, is this, this going to be forever? Mm. Kind of attitude now. Where I'm getting yeah. a little cocky. I'm doing stuff outside of my boot. And I shouldn't do that. I shouldn't fuck with Mother Nature. We all know how she gets a little pissed off. Shay, and you better learn your I don't lesson. think that makes any sense, though. What? It's not like Mother Nature hates you no like I oh sh- you have your boot off i'm gonna make you trip yes i'm not quite sure what i'm trying to say i know what you mean it doesn't matter <laughs> you're testing your little i'm testing limits. my limits you're testing my, your my little boundaries. my little brickle brattle bones are not my brickle brattle <laughs> i haven't my drinking brickle brackle. My, now it's like so bad to drink milk so i don't know how to get my calcium without taking a goddamn supplement or buying milk for eight dollars I can't do that. I just even when I was making money, it's I can't so do that. Good, though. I don't either. I don't buy. I I think once a year I buy that really good milk at Whole Foods. It's like super. Does it taste natural extra milky? <laughs> it's like you're drinking the milk of the happiest cow that frolics the fields, eating herbs and spice. And as he's getting milk, and he's grass. like... And I'm closing my eyes while I'm visioning this, I'm guys. Watching, I hope you... I'm watching you do that, and... Well, they can't. They can't see my... They can't see me closing my eyes. I know. You're really kind of in a deep meditation. Your back's kind of going back, and like sweet ecstasy. Like that cow was <laughs> when he was getting milk. He was like, mmm. <laughs> exactly. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Quick, quick, quick. <laughs> anyway, so, how was your weekend? Oh, it was fine. So what did you do yesterday? Oh, I did a little something. What'd you do? Tell I got to it. go to the Nebraska Cornhusker mm-hmm. and Colorado University Boulder. And how was that experience? A uh, Buffalo game. Yes. It was really fun. Well, that's good. I have not been to a football game in a really long time. Okay. I used to, like in high school. Well, they were fun. They were so fun. I would. I was a super fan. Yeah. I used to get fucking crazy decked out paint you know all the shit i think shit. that's just called school pride no we called them super fans they had names at okay. at fort collins high school we were legit actually we weren't it wasn't like a club it was just like you just like we're super called fan. super fans instead of like just i guess school pride it's basically just having a lot of school pride okay that's what i thought it, it is i'm it's anyway. like a requirement in texas mm. You if you don't to. wear your goddamn school colors, well, then fuck you. I'm did like, you? Oh, easy. I was in the band, so I had to. <gasps> oh, yeah. What did you play? The flute? Mm-hmm. Yeah, she did. Yeah. <gasps> you were in the band. I was. It was a, yeah. It was That's a, fun. It was a PE credit back then. <laughs> well, anyways. Anyway. Speaking of nostalgia, 
it was a nostalgic moment for me going to the game yesterday because I've been a Nebraska Cornhusker fan, I guess, my whole life. Okay. Because my dad's from Nebraska. Mm-hmm. And those fans are fucking diehard. I mean, football fans are always diehard. But They're crazy a little bit. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I've been a Husker fan my whole life. Never been to a game. And my little cousin Emily is a junior in college at the University of Lincoln, Nebraska, which is where the Huskers play. Mm-hmm. And she is dating um, Khalil Davis, who's like one of the defensive means. linemen. Oh. That's his name. Oh. He's he him and his twin brother. He's like a starter. He's like a he's a big deal. Like a double Khalil threat. Davis okay. fucking. <laughs> anyway, she's dating him and she got us tickets because the game was at CU and we were like, that's literally next to our house. So we're going. Technically, so we went. Nice. Um, and there were way more Nebraska Cornhusker fans than there were CU fans, which was fucking badass. Well, you have to remember, it's so in you, Boulder. They were like, we're it's a hiking bunch of today. Fucking hipsters. And they were probably boycotting it because of. They have a real live buffalo hmm. because they're the buffaloes. Right. And this, like, group of, like, cowboy club. I don't know what it's called. It's probably the Equine College. There's, like, 14 of them. They all dress in, like, black everything and black cowboy hats and, like, big old belts. They're like little cowboys, what the hell? and they like okay. f- t- they like um. So the fucking bull, the buffalo is in a trailer. Okay, like a horse trailer. How- a real live buffalo. Like, is it a full grown one? It's a full grown buffalo. It's not like the biggest buffalo I've ever seen, but it's a motherfucking buffalo. Well, maybe it's like a goldfish. Like, if you only like keep it in like a like a yeah, small maybe whatever, that's what it it's is. Like, it's like a. Uh, well, that I'm would make sense I, I, because... I need some foods. Um, yeah, so they keep him in a trailer, and then in the beginning of the game, when the football players come out, uh-huh. like, these little cowboy guys are all around the buffalo, so it's like they're all around it. You can't even really see the buffalo running. They just run with the buffalo across the field with, like, this giant harness on it, uh-huh. and they're all, like, there's these three boys holding it running as fast as they humanly possibly can, like holding the buffalo and the other people are around it, I think, to block the buffalo if he gets loose. I don't understand why they're running with it. Because it, they're the buffalo, so you gotta have a, bu- a real buffalo. Well, I mean, like, okay, like, so the longhorns, like, like the Texas longhorns, they have, it's Bebo, they have a longhorn, but it's like in this really pretty stall where everyone can see it outside, and he's just eating his shit. Oh, and yeah. They no. hold him. No. And that's it. I think the same thing with the ram. I don't, I don't think they run around. Oh, like, they run with this buffalo. Do they run Cammy the ram? I don't fucking know. I've, I never, I don't I've know. been to one CSU I, game. I don't know if they ran. But that's weird they run him. Yeah, they run across the field Like with he's him. fucking freaked out. Like, what is yeah, happening? Yeah, like, he for sure is freaked out. And then they put him back in the trailer for like till halftime so he's in the heat he sits in a trailer he sits in a fucking they don't trailer. just like have a, like a handler nope. like holding him nope which would make sense to me he's in a tra- well it's a buffalo i don't know it's a buffalo i know i guess if he's a like, wild oh, buffalo i'm gonna leave and he's like i'm gone yeah so he's sitting in a trailer in the heat of the sun um and then like right before halftime they like pull out they have this like four panel corral then they pull out pointed sticks and jab at him yeah I mean, pretty much <laughs> jesus christ so then they pull out they have like four corral panel things like the fence things that like people these some of these cowboy people are holding and then okay. they put him in a corral that literally is almost it's like a little bit bigger than him with the people holding it around him okay. and then they all pick it up and move it With the buffalo inside, while people are still holding the buffalo, but then the corral's being moved to the other side of the field, and then they run him again, and then they put him in the trailer, and then they finally leave and hopefully bring him to his a little bit bigger pen. But that is Ralphie the fucking buffalo's life. So it sounds like Ralphie may have caused some, like, disturbance, so they don't like to put him in a harness, so that they're like, let's, okay, company move, and they just, like, kind of shift him. Well, no, he's still in the harness, and they're still leading him. Oh, well, then that doesn't make any sense. It's... They sound like it's they crazy. don't know what they're doing over there. They're just, they're like, we don't know. We're li- we're literature well, majors. We don't know. We're liberal arts. I don't know how to deal with a buffalo. Well, it's a wild animal. So what else are you supposed to do? You ja- That's what you do. Because like, this is you what shouldn't they have a wild do. animal. This is what they do in the wild, you guys. I'm like, okay. 
You're yeah, they'd want to run with a bunch of motherfuckers yeah. on sure a do. football field yeah. while thousands of people are screaming. Haven't you seen that painted on the Indian walls oh, of the yes. caves? You're right, I have. In America? <laughs> Anyways, that's my fucking environmentally there it is. provoked conversation of yes. the day. But all whatever, all Ralphie stories aside, it was a good time. It was really fun. You're making fun of people. At the end of the game. Not you making fun of people, but people were really super serial about it. Super, super serious about it. It was, It's it's fun to kind of banter back at other fans. Oh, for sure. It's all but good also, fun. But also it's like, I've never said these things in my life to anyone. Like... You get caught up you in the were, emotion of it, for it's sure. It's crazy, like, the because the energy of everyone's like, yeah, blah, blah, blah. yeah. like, mm-hmm. and then it was funny, we were sitting across from some CU fans, we were, we had really fucking awesome seats. Yeah, I saw your little Instagram story. Yeah, it was awesome, and yeah. they weren't $400 like apparently all the other seats were. It's fucking stupid. They were free. Anyway, um... So we were across from some other CU fans and we were just like some kids behind us were like they were we were just going back and forth, which was fun. That's but then fun. there was this other guy who would like this like bit. He was probably in his 60s. He looks like an ex WWF like wrestler. Yes. He was for CU. And like if they the first half we were winning the whole time. But then the second half they were like they catching up, up. anyway. Yeah. So he, like, if they made his touchdown or anything good, he would, like, run over from the other side of his, like, where he was sitting, and he, like, took his shirt off, and he was, like, yelling, like, as loud as he could, like, his veins were popping out of his head, and he was, like, yeah, and then he was, like, doing this weird motion with his hands that looked like, you know, when Jim Carrey reaches into um, that guy's heart in Dumb and Dumber, and he pulls it out, and he eats it. Do you mean? Oh, yeah. It, he was like doing that kind of like, eh, like he was making his fist like that. And like, I don't know if that's what he was doing, but it was like that kind of motion with his hand. And he was like freaking out. And then I was yelling at him he that was he like, was really sunburned and he needed to put a shirt on. My dances and sacrifice to the demigods is making us win. So yeah. he had to like keep <laughs> contributing to that motion. Yeah, I guess it was something <laughs> like that. Um, oh, my word. But he was getting crazy. And then it was just. It was funny and ridiculous. That's fun, though. Every once in a while, they're a good time. It is. Yeah, it was really fun. I had a blast. Well, that sounds way more exciting than my day, which I really didn't do anything, Mm -hmm. which I guess is, you know, that can be nice, too. Yeah. Whatever. That's good. You need to relax your foot. Relax. But yeah, so uh, today we're drinking some... I didn't tell you what we're drinking. I know you didn't. I'm excited to hear about it. Because it's in relation to what I rolled, but I'm not going to tell you what I rolled yet, but um, what this is called... Can you take a guess of what this is called? It's whiskey based. It's kind of like a, a not as strong, old fashioned kind of thing. I never it has heard. some cherry and whiskey. Um, let's say it's a. It's an actual the drink. caboose. The caboose. I like it. Um, no, it is a John Collins. Mm. Maybe Tom's brother. I'm not quite sure. I know. I've heard of a Tom Collins. Yeah, I've heard. Oh, of yeah, t- this is kind of. I have. I've have. I've had a Tom Collins. I'm like, I haven't had this one before. And apparently, this is was one of the drinks. So oh. I was like, of the time. Of what era? Um, I'm not gonna tell you. Oh, okay. It's well, I can tell you. John it's the Collins. early 1900s. Ooh, exciting. Yeah, yeah. Don't tell me your subject. Yeah. Because Shay rolled history. Mm-hmm. Our first history topic, I know. and it was the first time we. We um, launched yes. our new topic. And I feel like we I needed to Launch. get a little bit more creative with our drinks because I was like, let's do White Claw. And then <laughs> yeah. what did we drink? Uh, something like just with like just a fancier. Orange sc- juice and yeah, just a vodka. Fan- just, a, just a different variety of screwdrivers. And I was like, we got to get more back in the game now and I feel better. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, so I was like, I think this is the perfect way to incorporate this and do something different. I love which it. Which I'm not a whiskey drinker, so... This is it's interesting. Really, it's really good. But what I don't has it hate got it. in it? It's got some the whisk like the bourbon whiskey. And then it's got a little simple syrup. And then let's see what else. That you made. It was really hard, you guys. <laughs> it's not. Um and then Hashtag simple. <laughs> hashtag simple as fuck. No, but you made it. Maybe I did. But then my little hands. <laughs> um Jesus. And then just I think like an ounce or two of, of like freshly sque- squeezed lemon juice. Ooh. And then I garnished with like some fucking cherries and a lemon and an orange. I got super fancy. Yeah, I got extra cherries because. Mm-hmm. You like them cherries? 12. That's fine. I mean, I'm eight. It's fine. I mean, if I really could eat carbs like I used to, I would have trick cereal every day. I'm an adult. You can do whatever you want. 
You're right. Anyway, so right. yeah. Well, thanks. It's a beautiful drink. So you rolled history. I rolled history. And, and Brianna rolled nostalgia. Nostalgia. Mm-hmm. Sweet. And my day's just been full of nostalgic, or my weekend. Actually, not really, but. No. I don't even know why I was saying that. Okay. Um, Do you just want to jump? Just right? yesterday. Okay. And today. Yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> just, just. Uh, okay. Let's, <laughs> let's just jump into, into this. Let's just go right into this. All right. We'll, we'll see you soon. <laughs> that was fine. That was fine. All right. There it is. Look at Welcome you. Welcome back. Here we are. Yeah. I saw your hand motion over by the recorder. And my intense eye contact that what with called? you. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. A recorder? I was right? Yeah, it's a recorder. Cool. Well, it's a recorder. It's a handy dandy recorder, much Getting... like Steve's notebook. Oh. I, don't, Steve. I keep up in my computer like I'm going to go, but. Yeah, it's my turn, bitch. <laughs> okay. I'm first. Fine. Jesus, stop yelling. When you're first, you're first. You're right. <laughs> if you're not first, you're last. You're last. So you're last, okay? The famous words of my PE coach, such an inspiration to oh. us kindergartners. Oh, God. Oh, okay. I was like, did he? She. He, did he? Oh. She. Mm. I don't know. Anywho. Anyway, mm. let's keep going. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay, so She's I rolled listening. nostalgia, guys. Mm-hmm. And I'm not listening to what? No, she, not you, my <gasps> PE teacher. Oh. <laughs> I was like, wait, I really thought I heard everything you just said for once. No. Okay, nostalgia. I rolled it. Okay. And so today I'm going to do a little something different. It's kind of going to... Be reminiscent of my, like, I love the 90s. Ooh, uh, I like episode. that. I like when you do that. And today we're going to talk about the choice. The cho- <laughs> Sophie's <laughs> choice? No. Oh. The toys of my childhood in the Ooh, early 90s. I like that one. Some that I had and some that I wish I did. Like Teddy Ruxpin? Yeah. That's, mm. we're not talking about him today. Okay, good. Because I already covered I him. didn't really know about him until, like, later in my life when I watched I Love the 90s on VH1. And I was like, what the fuck was that doll? Oh, man. Good thing my mom never got me that. He was a good, soft-coated weapon for sure. <laughs> yeah, my sister would have thrown that shit at me. Oh, for, for sure. sure. Aim right for the corner. Right for her eye socket. Right for her. <laughs> Great. One time, my sister... Want to hear a hilarious story? Always. She doesn't listen to what this. What are we doing here? Yeah. Um. So, maybe she does. Anyway. Sister, I love One you. time, we were hanging out with her friend that I probably had to ask if she could come over. Mm-hmm. Um, anyways, and my sister threw a rock at me and I ducked and it hit her friend right in the forehead. <laughs> oh, Your sister funny. throws rocks at you? She Jesus. did. We were selling lemonade and something got heated, I think. <laughs> okay, it was we were really, selling lemonade on the corner that it was, day. It got a little, a little violent and a I little. I think I might've wanted a little too much money. I was like, where say, were you like, um, we need to, I need, I'm either you're going to give me my fair pay or I'm going to go to the union. And yeah, she was like, basically. you know what? I'm not paying you shit. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Anyways, back to nostalgia. Um, do, and then I wanted to also start off by playing the song Do You Remember the Time by Michael Jackson, but I won't. Do you remember the time? You sing it in better the than early him. 90s. Just kidding. Yeah, I definitely don't do horrible things to people That's either. True. You don't. You sure don't. Anyway. Okay, let's go. Sorry. I Ra- so I was going to talk about Razor Scooters because I was like, oh yeah, early 90s, right? And you no. r- rode one? What? And I, because I rode one no? the other day. But wait. They came out in 2000. Really? So no talk about Razor Scooters today. I thought they came out like the late 90s. No. Well, I got my 2000. facts crisscrossed. Crisscross applesauce. That's right. So we're going to start off by talking about fucking moon shoes. Ooh. Do you remember I, those? I wanted yeah, those. Yeah, this I, is going to be a walk down memory lane, so I hope you guys are ready for this. I wanted one of the, a pair of those, and I never got them. Well, don't worry, Shay. They still sell them oh, for $25. You know what? That, It'd be perfect. For, perfect for my foot now. For your other foot. Yeah. To break. Yeah. And I could just, like, do, you like, the, the wacky, what is it, like, I don't remember, it was some weird, just like a cartoon character, like, when they get, like, their foot stuck, like, in a door, and it becomes, like, a... A oh, fucking yeah. accordion, yeah. and that would be my fucking foot <laughs> as I'm walking down the street. Yeah, they're kind of sketch. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so they were basically trampoline, like they were okay. They were shoes marketed for children, unfortunately, 
they're not for adults too. No. I mean, we technically. Could. I know. Yeah. Um, I'll get to the weight max later. Um, <laughs> Forty-five pounds. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's shoes for children filled with trampoline, filled with trampoline-like just springs for children. Just shoes full of just trampolines. It's just trampolines of goodness. Yeah, they were marketed as mini trampolines for your feet. I and they also didn't make you, your feet bounce, but keep going. Sorry. Yeah. Well, they were rival. They were. Um, they rivaled the Nickelodeon ones, didn't they? Well, no, they are the Nickelodeon ones. Oh, okay. So originally, moon shoes were introduced in the fifties, actually, and they were metal, and they were like that. Sounds terrifying. Yeah, that's even <laughs> scarier. And then, but then they um, changed it up because America to make it like plastic and have like bungee strings, that's... and apparently that was a safety upgrade. Mm, I don't know about Disagree, that. Disagree, but okay. But yeah, so in Nick in the nineties, Nickelodeon relaunched them mm. to kind of mimic because they had like shoes. all the cool colors. And yeah, yeah, they could be like slime. Yeah, and then they'd sell. Yeah, if you put I'd, slime on anything. I had Gak. I didn't have slime, but I had Gak. Well, like you know, like they just they marketed slime. Mm-hmm. Like they were just anyway. Um. So, according to the makers, the anti gravity effects while. De- um, develop balance and coordination. So just don't die on them, okay? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. They're really good for your balance and coordination. Just though, as agree. long as you don't, as long as you don't twist your ankle. Yeah, as long as you don't bust or, your fucking eye socket <laughs> open. They're really great for learning that. What the fuck? Um, they do still make them. Like I said, they're apparently twenty five dollars. They like relaunched them in like, um. Like 2013 or something. Like there's a new company that makes them or something. Um, But the max weight limit is 160 pounds. Really? I'm pretty sure. Like I think I was really afraid that. Like I wasn't. I wasn't like a fat (laughs) kid, but like I was like. I always just thought like, no, I'm gonna break it. I'm gonna be the ones that I'm like, wee, and then I just like fall Fall. to the ground and just shatter your ankles. Just shatter my ankles. Your heels. Yes. Um. It's also marketed to ages eight to eleven, but. 160 you can push that a little bit too i think i maybe think 200 had, maybe I feel, I feel like the weight limit was way less back in the 90s but now yeah. i maybe feel like now, we have a little more obese toddlers that they're, they're like, like we have to upgrade the bungee cords age eight 160 to like Perfect. if you're gonna like jump off the grand canyon they're like we can we can sustain that yeah so wow all right shoes well noted i might have to get one for my foot for funsies if I'm yeah, feeling wacky and crazy. Right? If you yeah. want to break your ankles again, maybe Dude. for next year. Maybe that's how you'll break it next year, Shay. It, maybe, if I'm lucky. Your annual foot. Yes. If I'm like, if I see up. a slump in our in our listenership, I'm like, you know what, Bree? Let's go it's get some to get moon juice. juice. <laughs> We're recording this. Let's go. Perfect. Anyway. All right. Next toy on the list. Motherfucking skip it. Ooh, I didn't have one of those, but my friend had those. And I hated that motherfucker. That probably also was like, this is a great coordination tool as long as you can use it. Yeah. Oh, I love skip it. I couldn't do skip it. So I was so bad at it's it. it's basically the OG Fitbit. <laughs> Actually, yeah, it is. You know? It fucking is. You're so right. Um, It was based on a 1960s toy called a Lemon Twist, a which was just twist. a weight that spun around on a string around your ankle. <laughs> it was like... Hey, parents, are, is your kid a little too fat? Put this ankle weight on them and have them run around. That's great. And it's called a lemon twist. <laughs> Just put a lemon on a string. It's fine. You could do it. Oh, my. Do it yourself. God. Um, And then <laughs> Skip It originally came out in the 80s. But really? <laughs> it really kicked off in the 90s when they added the motherfucking counter. Yeah, that was the biggest thing. Because I remember. people were like, yeah, I'm going to beat you. Yeah. Fucking America competition. It's true. My friend or, had the, pinks, the pink one. Me too. Yeah. Or I think my sister did, and I definitely And used she it. hit you with it or something? <laughs> she probably threw it at me. No. <laughs> your uh, sister and my sister should be best friends. Yeah, they're nice. Yeah. But you're the older sister. I am. But your sister I didn't throw shit up. Sometimes. She was just a lot stronger than me. <laughs> she was strong. It's okay. I got her back one time because I, I ejected. You remember Sky Dancers? Oh, I'm a, literally. That's the next thing I'm about to fucking talk well, about. I'll wait for my story. Oh my god! Hashtag yes. Destiny and Simpatico, man. Oh my god, that's literally the next toy on my list. Shay then is I'll, Sky Dancers. Then I will wait. I will so wait till I'll I wait. finish. I skip wait. it. Okay. Okay. So. um... Apparently, you can still buy a Skip It, and they're $6. 
Really? So that's it? I'm going to get it. That's way more. Yep. That was, that's way cheaper than a gym membership or a Fitbit. Yeah. And you're just skipping around. Yeah. The old commercial. There's one old commercial I saw that was like these little kids skipping on it. And then like a nun walks into the frame and she like gets I scared by it. That. But then she like does it. She's Do like, remember that? what? She's, Sex yeah. and skip it. What is this craziness? <laughs> the devil. The Satan. Or it's like, we app- Jesus approves of the skip it. <laughs> It's, Not the yo-yo. That's good, wholesome fun. Exactly. Um, and then... <laughs> yo Stop it. I don't remember... I don't know if you remember the little rhyme for Skip It, but... I don't think I do. What is um, it? It's... Ref- there's a counter on this... Wait. Fuck. Oh, good. Forget it. Forget it. I don't... I remember there being, like, a theme song, like, everything, obviously, and everything now, I just don't watch those commercials, has a jingle, but, like, I don't remember what the jingle was called. I didn't really remember it, but it was kind of funny, but I wrote it wrong, so... So, never mind. <laughs> Moving on. There's a counter on. on this, so try to be your very vet best score. See if you can jump a whole lot more. Oh. I feel like it was, like, a rhyme like that. I don't really know if it was, oh. but that was the slogan. Anywho, I like next it. up... Motherfucking sky dancer Shay. That I was, didn't have one. I wanted one. Oh, we had a couple. We had like two, but they were my sisters. Ugh. At least I think. Oh. Unless I cried like the time that I cried with the Barney membership. I don't know. <laughs> poor, poor and, little Shay. Anyway, you can go ahead and talk about that, and I'll tell my story. So here basically, in a sky dancers. If you guys don't remember those, they're like those little pull helicopter things that boys had, but girls were like, no. We're yeah. going to get some in a fucking ballerina. Yeah, just put some pink on it and make a doll go on it and we'll be and the girls will be happy. Exactly. I wanted a boy one to be honest. It's like how they too. made girl Legos and I was like, "No, just give me some fucking yeah, Legos." Like, I don't need it to be fucking sparkly. Yeah. I mean, that is definitely an added bonus though. That's honestly. honestly our, it yeah. was cool. I mean, sky dancers were sweet. Yeah. They were pretty cool. And they were like cuz I wanted to be a sky dancer and you're like Meh. with my little wings wrapped around my my body and then just fling up and fly yes <laughs> fling up and fly fling up and fly okay um so there was also a show do you remember the sky dancer show no and there were boy sky dancers i don't remember the boy sky dancers and i don't remember the i mean i think i probably i probably saw the show at some point but i don't i didn't watch it like regularly yeah i didn't really either but there was a show yeah and it came out in like the mid 90s okay back um, when the but cartoons there were boys were and girls awesome. sky dancers there was some love triangles i'm sure oh, scandalous there like, was some like the my little pony wars. shit ooh i don't know anyway um they used to sell for about 12 bucks, and if you get a real good one, they sell for 140 now. So they're discontinued. There's no more Sky Dancers. No, I don't think so. So you have to, like, they're like a collector item. Yeah, they're collectible. Sick. So let's hear about your story oh, about Sky so Dancers. Oh, so the other thing about That's Sky so Dancers funny. that you did not cover is that they are very, very kind of, um, they can be used as weapons. Dangerous. Yeah, they're dangerous. So I, so even though she may have hit me with my goddamn Teddy Ruxpin, I flung, like, right like at her face, I like I <laughs> ripped the thing and like the like the the little arms came out and like just clocked right in the eye. She started bleeding. Yeah. Oh my god! Yeah. yeah, that's a badass like little scar. She's like, "Where'd you get that?" Like, oh, from Fairy Blossom Sky Dancer. <laughs> Do they have wing. different names? I have no idea. I made that oh up. My god, I but wish. we also would. Uh, really do. We would, and we actually got in trouble a couple of times. I don't remember if it was at my parents' house or my grandparents' house, but we would launch them, and then we they would we would launch them up into the fans. And I oh, think yeah, we broke one so fan fun. one time. Yeah, and that was what we did because we didn't have fucking phones. <laughs> We just destroyed no, equipment. You just used your imagination. And just destroyed our parents' property. Perfect. <laughs> That's why they're like, thank God for iPads. It's true. It's like the one time I... My, just don't destroy I, this fucking computer... No. Fucking right? life source in No, I... But, like, I... My my mom was part of, like, Texas Parks and Wildlife. Like, this... Um, just... It's a Texas monthly magazine about wildlife. And... Um, <laughs> <laughs> monthly. And so she... She just had, she was like a communications director. So she had access to just a lot of different contacts. And so one time, like, I don't know why or how she brought home a bow and arrow. And I, for whatever reason, decided it was a really smart idea to like, to use it. And she told me that I could, but she wasn't paying attention. Like where I was just out in the backyard and we had like this little like separate house. It was like a, it was a pool house essentially. And nobody was in there thank god but i was put the target 
like on our porch and we have like all glass doors and I was shooting at the target with the glass doors behind it. <laughs> I'm a perfect shot. I'll, I'll I be remember fine. the exact moment where I hit it and then the glass just went. Shh. I was like, and I just remember just like hanging my head Why and just going inside the and just like putting my bow and arrow down and just going, fuck. I, I don't even think I said fuck in my head, but like, yeah. Anyway, oh again, I just destroyed my parents' property. So yeah, anyway, that's perfect. Go on. Um. Yeah. Fucking sky dancers. I didn't have them, but I wanted one. They <laughs> again. Your sister probably would just hit you with it. You're right. And or I just I got, would have retaliated. I, yeah. And I I retaliated to my sister, even though it really wasn't her fault that she threw the Teddy Ruxpin at me. She didn't know. She didn't know. She was, was little. Seventeen pounds. Yeah. Sh- of love. pure cassette tapes. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so next up on my list is The Beloved, which I was like, should I do this as like a separate episode? But what? I decided not to. A motherfucking troll doll. I'm I saying had... motherfucking in front of all of these titles. I like it. So, so um, I had those. Did oh, you yeah. have the ones with the little diamonds? Oh, I had, I think I had one with a diamond belly. And I only had, I didn't have a lot, but my second grade teacher and my fourth grade teacher, she was the same teacher. With them. She had a collection and people would always like buy her trolls and she had like at least 200 in her classroom. Yeah, I didn't have um, my grandmother. That, Shout out Mrs. K. Yeah, my grandmother that had like pa- right before she passed away, she would just get me like these little gifts. And that was one of the things like she got me like this little pack of like six of them. And it had like the little diamond bellies. But I was like, I I had them, but I did. I think creeped me out. Honestly. They did? They creeped me out. I didn't like them. I liked them. I had a troll game. Did you? Pa- it was like a troll game that you like go through the forest and then you go through like the, oh. the like the mean troll like forest and then I mean I enjoyed the there the was fruits. pogs with I, it. I enjoyed it the fruit snacks. They had really good fruit snacks. I don't. I had those. Oh. That's probably the only troll things I enjoyed. Mm. But Cause you I got to don't eat remember them. pogs. Yeah, I don't remember. I remember pogs. I just remember them having a line. Yeah, it was a troll game with pogs. Ooh. Like the game had pogs in it, so it was super fucking nineties. Yeah, that's oh my 90s. god! I want to. F- <gasps> I need to find that game. It was so fun. Oh my god! It was so fun. Anyways, it was so much fun. I am just taking myself back. Anyway, so troll dolls were actually invented in 1959 by a Danish woodworker. Really? Yes. Surprising. Um, and then his name was Thomas Dam. And he carved his first troll doll as a gift for his daughter. Oh, that's cute. Um, and then he began selling the dolls locally after his daughter's friends kept asking for him because they were so oh, cute. Oh, that's cute. He was the first trend. That's not true. But you know what I mean. He was. A little bit. Um, they were originally <laughs> he, the first one ever. The first one ever in the 50s. There's That's <laughs> not true. That's an ignorant American talking. <laughs> um, yeah. Shut up, shit. Shut up. No. Um, they were originally called Damn Dolls because his last name was Damn. Oh, but they could. They're like, hey, this is this not, is okay. not okay. okay. Not okay language. Not for the American kids. They are too innocent. They are. We were. It yeah. was a different time. It was. Anyway. Um, they were made of wood and they had wool hair and glass eyes. I'm glad they changed that. That sounds, number one, <laughs> like a weapon. And number two, just fucking terrifying. No, thank Little you. Little glass eyes looking at you. Can you imagine, you? like, if a moonlight came from your, like, window and it just, like, hit all of your, like, doll's eyes at once? You're like, oh, my God. Jesus <laughs> Christ. Is that a cat? Nope, it's just Not the, the moonlight. It's just the demons. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I think they're fucking cute. Okay? <laughs> well, those are, I mean, I, I'm i talking about the ones the that new, were, the, the, the old ones. ones with the wool hair and, like, the fucking glass eyes and... No, thank you. I think they're cute. Mm-mm. Um, so as you know, the primary characteristics characteristics of normal trolls are that they're ugly. They're the real fucking, trolls, yeah, like real fucking the real, trolls. The real they fucking live trolls. They under bridges. They fucking if spend I, their time tricking humans. They I like mean, live under the bridge and wait for you. The troll with the billy goat scruff. I know. I cannot tell you that I'm so happy I don't live by a bridge anymore because that was just such a pain in the ass to have to give him a riddle. Would fuck up my commute. Give me a riddle. <laughs> I hate when those goddamn trolls ask for a riddle. Like I just got to go. Me late. Yeah. Always. <laughs> that was so good. Um, yeah, they're also always like hideous, you know? 
But damn, managed to take those ugly little trolls, their fucking wrinkly faces and their little noses and their giant ears and their wrinkly, gross bodies. I mean, that's fair. They made him more cherub-like. He did. He, he made did. Him, he the made ones, them into tiny little adorable figures. The ones that were like in the... I mean, I haven't not... I've not seen the ones that are made out of wood, but... Mm-hmm. The ones that were, like, the ones that I had were really cute. The I just plastic did, ones? Yeah, and I just Because we're America? Yeah. Because I... The cause real America. ones, and I say that because those are the only ones that count. Mm-hmm. I'm being fucking... I'm joking. Um, so, according to Scandinavian tradition, nothing bad can happen to a person who is laughing. And so, Dam thought of his charmingly Aww. unattractive little trolls, which he named good luck trolls, as a chuckle-inducing Aww. little toy. I like that. That's the the intention behind it. It's actually really sweet. It's really cute. That's super cute. And he made That's one for wholesome. his daughter. It is. And he's, um, Dan once said that they were so ugly that you couldn't help but laugh. And when you laugh, luck follows you. Aww. Isn't that, that fucking precious? That's a cute toy maker that right is there. True. That is true. That's what the kind, that's the kind of toy maker you want in your Making your fucking toys. Exactly. Not, not putting ones. poison lead paint on mm-hmm. them. Just or fucking... like, don't lick this, kids, or put it in your mouth. Yeah, don't worry. You probably won't. You're a child. Die. Oh, wait, you will. You will. Even maybe an adult will. Mm, you never know. Anywho. So, um, anyways, in the 90s, <laughs> so imitations were made out of plastic for them. Uh, mm-hmm. They... They and they were released in North America and became very popular. But the horse. um, and uh, hey oh, yeah. So in the sixties, they started making imitation ones in North America, um, mm-hmm. and then they weren't really. They kind of like trailed off their popularity, yeah. and then they started back again in nineteen eighty nine, producing them, um. And because people were, like, nostalgic for them. That was mm-hmm. one of the things I read in the actual article. Damn. Um, and it caused a second boom period for the trolls in the early 90s. Get on them. They get nostalgia, a little Nostalgia, bitch. It yeah. always brings it back. Literally. Yeah. So, oh, and also, the yeah, the trolls were called damn trolls or damn things. Um, and they were the most popular trolls with... They're the most popular trolls collect with collectors today. Dam's original trolls. Are. Really? Okay. Damn things. Damn things. Those damn things. Nice. But they also have the highest quality, um, the best clothing, and the most character. Of the with those little troll glass dolls? eyes. The best clothing. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah. I'm looking these up right now. Anyway, keep going. The damn things. Yes. They have clothes. Oh, I'm gonna look, but you keep going. The, the trolls didn't really. Some of the trolls had clothes. They had like little. I think one of they mine did. had a vest. They had little. You can buy like little clothes purple. for them. But I just oh my got my God. naked. It was a purple vest. He yeah. Had. Okay. Anywho. Anywho. Go Next on. Next one. <laughs> yes. This one's very random. I but like it. Do you remember the fox tail? The fox tail. That sounds it so was, familiar. It was literally a tennis ball. With a flag like pointed tail that was really long, and you like fucking wrung it around your head and threw it. Do you I, remember those things? I think I vaguely, I don't, I never had one for sure, but I think I remember them. One of my research uh, sources was uh, BuzzFeed, so uh, yeah, so it's a tennis ball with a long flag like tail. Um, the amount of power you felt whirling this above your head like a goddamn cowboy, like a lasso, just swinging it around your head. I remember it. Do you guys remember it? I mean, so, I tried to look it up, and this is what initially came. <laughs> oh, no. Is it porn? That. Oh, yeah, it is. It's a fucking. Yeah. No. Nope. That's not not a butt plug. Do you need to <laughs> foxtail to- well, no, foxtail toy that's, might I, be bad, That's too. what I did, and then it came oh. up with the butt plug. And I was like, oh, dear. Oh, my that's God. God, no. that's not the kind of foxtail I'm talking about. They were like, we're going to go for the nostalgia for these people. That I are- mean, this could be a butt plug, too. <laughs> yes, really, you know? uh, <laughs> if you get real crazy. Anyway, I'm going to do child's toy. Um, anyway, go on. So Sorry. you can make your own. Maybe I'll make my own. Maybe we can make our own 30-ish foxtails and just sell them. Sell them. <laughs> so basically all you do is you sew some fabric into a po- into a cone and you can you can literally sew it onto a tennis ball. 
So it almost looks like one of those toys that you like would throw a dog. <laughs> Maybe you did just throw it to a dog, but I used to have one as a child. Oh, huh. My parents threw it to that me. That one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it just looks like something you like a like a Kong toy, like you would throw to yeah, an you're animal. Right. You're right. Which maybe the parents were like, "Fuck it, yeah, that's about right. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Go fetch, Junior. I don't even care." Get I think face. we should have a new business venture and make mm-hmm. them, but that's just me. It could be like our merch. Yeah, for sure. Anyway, um, go on. So then we also have the magic mitt. Do you remember that? I don't. It Damn, was you're getting me at uh, once. I don't basically like a saucer with Velcro all over oh, it. Oh yes, I had that shit. Balls at it. I had that shit because then it became like a part of like. Here's your backyard starter pack, and oh, you would like yep. get that, and you would sometimes it would they're always wouldn't like even stick. neon colors. Yeah, they yep. wouldn't stick very well. Yeah, sometimes. I had that all day long. For so sure. you can also make your own one of those. Just put some Velcro on some uh, frying pan lids, and you get yourself a magic mitt. Man, I was gonna be way off. I was like, just put it on some two by fours. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that'll work. I'm just thinking round. No, if you're, you're no again. My constructive thinking is obviously clearly not there. But oh, I did want to tell you. Yes. How you actually make your own um, fox tail? This is the these are the uh, list of ingredients, if you will. Okay. Um, an old tennis ball, scrap fabric, sewing machine, dental floss, what? Sewing needle, and needle no needle nose pliers, maybe. All right. Next up, and the last thing I'm going to talk about today is silly putty. Okay, I did have me some silly putty, and that yeah, stuff in my hands stank. Really? Oh God, it was awful. It was weird. I love playing with it, but it made my hands smell like metallic money. Oh yeah, it's weird. It's boric acid and silicon oil. Oh. Okay. So let's talk about how the fuck silly putty came about. What is that shit? Well, I just told you what it technically is, but yeah, you did. It originally, during World War II, the government asked chemists to search for a synthetic rubber substitute. Okay. And so one scientist, Dr. James Wright, came pretty close, but not close enough. Obviously, he no. made silly putty instead. He's like... Which would not really work very well. No. He I got mean, fired. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> You're fired! You're fired. He's like, that's Speaking fine. I'm, gonna go to, I'm going to my tail. That's fine. Um. So in 1943... The chemical engineer for General Electric added a bit of boric acid to silicone oil. He noticed that the compound pol- polymerized it's fine. to form a resilient, flexible material that was almost like rubber, but it tended to melt and couldn't hold a solid shape. When you break Silly this putty. down, though, like, and then they just handed this to children. Yeah. Anyway, go well, on. Originally, so... um. Ugh. So a toy store owner named Ruth caught wind of what of the whatever it wasn't called silly Fucking putty Ruth. then this goo or whatever, and um, she decided to carry it in her toy store, um, and then eventually she lost interest in the product and Peter Hogson took it off her hands and then he was eventually marketed to because originally it was marketed to adults and it was sold in like for what like to like. To like play with, I don't know. Oh, well, like well, I thought it was like gonna be used like as a tool as a or stri- something. Yeah, I don't like know. Like a sticky. Because sometimes like you, it could harden up. It's yeah. Kind of gross and anyway. Yeah, it's weird. Um, but it didn't. Yeah, it was sold at like Neiman Marcus. Um, that's get your hose, like that. but your fine jewelry and your silly putty. But yeah, so at first it was marketed to adults, and then once Hogston decided to market it towards kids he created a tv ad campaign for silly putty huh. um and it was actually one of the first commercials for kids um that's pretty cool yeah and yes. then his strategy really paid off because when he died in 1976 his estate was worth 140 million and today it's worth 590 million so oh. he did, and it's been named one of the most popular one of the like popular toys of all time, of course, like worldwide. Well, he won. Yeah, he did. Um, it's and also I have a little some fun facts about Silly Putty that I didn't know about. So here's some little fun facts about Silly Putty for you. Okay. Um, Perfect. It's considered a liquid solid. Okay. You really? Can, so if you drop a ball of Silly Putty, it bounces. Mm-hmm. 
if you throw it from a roof, it shatters into pieces. I didn't know that. What? I'm going to do that. Wait, if you drop it, yeah, if it you just shatters? From a high... I think you have to throw it from a high... Like from the Empire State Building? Yeah! <laughs> no. Just don't do like that. Like higher than like Nobody your do that. fucking hand can... Like a... Like two, if we got on top of my two. roof right now. Yeah. Like it's it a would shatter into house, pieces it would apparently. Sh- like shards. I have a couple sources. That like the crystals. This. Yeah, I like guess. the dark crystal. Um, if you pull it apart, it stretches. If you hit it with a hammer, it keeps its shape. Weird. Yeah, it's fucking weird shit. Good that's try, kinda, little chemist like, man. It's like alien shit. It is. Um, it's used as a grip enhancer. Um, athletes use silly putty to strengthen their grip. Really? It was a practice popularized by famous football player Raymond Barry. Hashtag bringing it back to football. What's up? Yeah. yeah. Just, anyway, just kidding. I don't even know who Raymond Barry is, so it's sorry. okay. I didn't know who your people were either, so it's fine. The Huskers? The the whatever you said, like it the, the off. <laughs> what? Mr. <laughs> John Collins has got to my brain. Um, the starter or whatever you were saying. Oh yeah. Well Whoever yeah. this you were like, he's a big deal. I'm like, I don't know what that means. Well, I, no, that's fine. Yeah. That's okay. Anyway, go on. Sorry. Okay, so um, it's one of history's top selling toys. According to Crayola, who sells it now, they own Silly Putty. Mm -hmm. Um, Crayola crayons. Crayola crayons, not crowns. Ever. Let's just make that clear. Um, So more than 300 million eggs of Silly Putty have been sold since 1950. Um, And that's 45 Hundred tons of silly putty. That's a lot of silly. That's a lot of indestructible things because apparently, you yeah. Can, when's that biodegrade? I know. Ugh. Those pla in plastic eggs. Great in plastic eggs. They're in plastic eggs because they were first sold at, at Easter time. That's another little fun fact. Oh, that's kind of cute. I always wondered why. Um, also, its price has never changed. It's always been sold for a dollar. Really? Mm-hmm, that's not neat. That's pretty neat. Like fucking withstanding the test of time and inflation mm-hmm. literally um and also now they make now they're saying that silly putty is they use it for like therapeutic reasons and there's like brands that are like there's this one brand called thinking putty and so it's, it's like, like marketed it to, for yeah to play with it and mm-hmm. so there are very specific hand exercises that can be beneficial when used hmm. as an everyday stress reliever you can, like, Google that. That's pretty cool. Look up your different silly putty hand exercises. Um, Sounds cheaper than therapy. They're also used for focus control in children and adults with ADHD. Um, it's also used in autism therapy, occupational therapy, and physical therapy for arthritis, carpal tunnel syndrome, and other conditions. Pretty soon, you don't even need, like, medical insurance. It's all just, just be, get like, some just silly get, putty. get some silly putty and rub it on it. It'll be fine. But this thinking, because I love silly putty. I used to, like, did you ever used to put it like on it. newspapers? And then it yes. would pick up the ink? And that was super cool, but I just hated the way it made my hand smell. Mm. I have a thing with that. And even as, like, a baker, like, that should not bother me, but it does. No, yeah. That's no, why I, that is good. That's why I baked everything with, oh, with, with, your gloves. with gloves. Oh, yeah. I don't Excuse like being me. sticky. You're gross. I know. Um, also, this thinking putty, it's like this, there's this one brand called like Dr. Someone's Cravely Thinking Putty. I don't know. But they have like a clear thinking putty. It's like clear. That would freak me out. I, I love like that. that. And it's like it stays like clear. I mean, that's cool, but I still feel and like that glittery. would freak me out. Yeah, I would, I would get that. I, I think my know, sister like has that some actually. Much. It's talking about my sister a lot. Anyway. I know. Um, all good things. All good things. She has she has some of that. Um, yeah, and then, yeah, we were talking about, I will, I didn't talk about GAC, but that's a whole other. It's the same thing, except just. Except like slimy. It's like it it makes a mess. Yeah, it it's weird. It's very weird. And I didn't have it's that. It's more sticky. I like, think maybe I had one thing of GAC. My sister had it. It was like a purple one. But I think Did actually, you have anything of your own, Shay? No, because she had all the cool toys. I had, I mean, I had. To, I mean, Teddy Ruxpin was mine, and I and we we just we shared everything. But she had some. But I think one time I got stuck in her hair. Oh yeah, and it was bad. It was not good. Gross. It was bad. Yeah, it was super bad. No, I also didn't talk about Squand. Do you guys remember? Do you? Remember I remember that? Squand. I did not have any of that. I think I talked about that in another episode, but yeah, I didn't have any of that either. But yeah. Fucking squand. 
Um, well, sweet. Those are just a couple. I like it. I like those, like, some, like, fast-track nostalgia, like, ones that we could never do whole episodes on. Hell yeah. Fuck I yeah. I just wanted to bring you guys back. I like spark it. Spark your nostalgic nerves. Little hearts. Little heartstrings. Your little, yes, pull at your heartstrings and really bring you back to the times we're gonna keep on child, going back t- in time with oh, yeah, my history. Are. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's history time, chugga, y'all. Chugga. It's time for a history lesson. Mm-hmm. You and ready? I think we're ready to go. Let's get in this boat. <gasps> Pretty good. Okay. Are we back and we, ready to oh, go? Oh, we're back and we're ready. We're ready to fucking drop some drunk history on you. Oh, it's kind of yeah, a little bit what it is. So I'm ready. History. And this is where the drink from John Collins was, because it was um, served on the ship. The ship? The Titanic. Oh, you got it, girl. Oh. So I'm doing this first because it was like one of the first things that I got, and I was obsessed with it before the fucking movie came out. Let me just make that goddamn clear. Even though I saw it seven times in the theaters. That doesn't matter. Seven? Yeah, I saw Well, it was in the How theaters for like a you? fucking year. Um, 98, right? 97. Oh, 97. Oh, you my remember My sister the was year. way more obsessed, actually, than I was. Oh, my God. Um, but this no. is a sister talk today. I know. It's sister, sister hour. Mm-hmm. Um, um, yes. And so I was, I was super obsessed about it, like, when I was, like, 10. So it was, like, the first thing I was super, like, like got really invested in history and stuff like that. And I had like all the, stu- I had like the little books that had like the, where it was like the, the layout of the ship. And then it showed like, like a little like officer taking a shit. And it was <laughs> where you kind of could see like all through the ship decks and you could oh see all the people. Do you remember those books? Like, yeah. And you could see like inside like medieval castles and stuff. So they had like one of those for like the Titanic. So I had those and I had like the, all these books on the Titanic. There's just so, a fucking, the captain taking a shit in yes, the book. Yes, exactly. It's nice. Um. <laughs> He just took a shit in my book. Just a shit all on the book. Um, so I had, I was super, super just obsessed. And I, I just, it was, I was super fascinated with it. Um, so that's why I'm doing it first. Because it was my first intro to history. Um, well, I mean, I was 10 at that time. So I had intro to history, but I really wasn't paying attention. Let's be honest. No, no you weren't. Um, um, I, that movie scared the sh- I was a very um, scared, <laughs> I got scared sailor everything <laughs> when I was little, but um. I like that's one of my worst fears. That's why my, I won't go on cruises. Yeah, I just but like in my home, I thought I was just going to, you know, just die of like I'd be sleeping just like that lady in her bed and, and just die. I'd just be flooded <laughs> like in the Titanic just in my house. It's true. I loved it and I loved Jack, oh, obviously. Who didn't like Leonardo I mean, DiCaprio? I mean, come on. He still to this day in that movie a beautiful is beautiful man such the perfect well, the fact that he also like is man. like we also should rescue the environment it's like come on double well, threat yeah. well, i'm just saying jack dawson well jack dawson. leonardo dicaprio in general obviously yes he is quite amazing oh i wrote i love leo on so many things after that movie he was he, yeah he was pretty sexy in that movie because i was like uh, right off the time like he did like leonardo so um i'm sorry uh romeo, romeo and juliet and so they, he looked like super similar because mm-hmm. he did back to back he was beautiful Yes, he is. He still anyway. is beautiful. What am I talking about? Yeah. Anyway, anyway. okay. So, um, so Back this to- this one's gonna be kind of like a not a super super in detail, just because I don't have five hours. Yeah. But um, you know, you need about. 12. Do you know like a lot about, it or did you just watch the movie, or did you ever do any research on it? I mean, I know some things, and I know a lot of the stuff. I've seen like some behind the scenes stuff, like from the movie and. Like, it'll be like a history thing with the movie okay. and, the, yeah. like, actual what happened. But So, history light for you on this one. But, yeah. Cool. Yeah, so it was my first whatever. So, I'm, I was, I was just, I'm like, okay, I have to hold back a little you, bit. This was your first expert It was. Experience. It was, I, like, wanted to watch, like, every fucking documentary on it. And I just thought it was so fascinating because, like, it was, I mean, they found it in 1985. So I found it so fascinating that they would like, so I'd watch all the videos of like just it coming out of the darkness and, but I'm like, oh my God, they're like two and a half fucking miles under the sea. That's my nightmare. Oh, and they would talk about how like if like a screw would like blow in that little submarine, like they would be gone in like a, a fraction of a second because yeah. the, it would just crush them. Anyway. Anyway. 
Wait, they found it in 1985? Yeah, they, they didn't find it till 1985. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'm going to learn you today. I'm so excited. Okay, here we go. I'm, I'm so, so glad, glad we, we added this I know, topic. I was just going to say that. I love it. So, okay. So the name, and again, I just want to make this clear. I was super obsessed before the fucking movie. Okay, everybody? Okay. So. We um, believe you. Okay. Um, I got like picked on a lot, like at school for that. Like you just like I'm like no, I was learning this back in '95. I could have told you all of this even before. Yes, and long before in my child's brain it was two years before the movie happened. So whatever. Um. Anyway, okay. So the name Titanic derives from the Titan of Greek mythology. Mythology. So mm. just means Titan essentially. Um, and it was built in built. It was built in Belfast, Ireland. And they the, didn't do a pretty, pre, didn't do a real good job. Nope. Well, well, they did. They 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 did, and they, the captains fucked it up. Yeah. Well, there's but some. We'll there's get to a that. Lot of things. Oh, we'll get to that. So the RMS Titanic was the second of three Olympic class ocean liners. The first was the RMS Olympic, and the third was, and so it was, it was, it was the middle sister. So just it always like me. yes, it just didn't, it just didn't felt like it was loved or. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Um, just crashing into icebergs just, one after the like, other. Mom, do you see me now? <laughs> oh, you don't. I'm going to sink into the ocean. Well, that's my fine. I'm, I'm just going to just drown in my own self-pity. But then I'll be the most famous boat ever to live. It's true. It's like, it's like a fucking silver lining. <laughs> anyway, so. Um, and the third after the Titanic was the HMS, HMHS uh, Britannic. They were by the far like the largest vessels of the British shipping company, which was called the White Star Lines Fleet. So they were like, you know, the who's who of boats back in the day. Okay. Um, The ships were constructed by the Belfast shipbuilders Harland and Wolf and had a long established relationship with the White Star Line dating back to 1867, which to me, I just like to put those dates in because I'm like, that's so fucking long ago. Yeah. But really not, which is crazy. Um. So Titanic was 882 feet long, uh, oh, and nine inches long. Her total height measured from the base of, like, from like like, you just called it a her. I know. Sorry. Well, don't you know that? Like, it's like she. Yeah. She's the ship. She's the ship. ship. She's the little. She's a. She's a Bessie. Because she, everyone wants to ride on her, and she just. (laughs) (laughs) Never mind. (laughs) Anyway, so. Her total height measured from the ba- fr- measured from the base of the keel to the top of the bridge. Base. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> it looks like a dick. <laughs> Hashtag the boat. It doesn't. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, like my second bullet, just so you know. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, um, the total height <laughs> measured from the base of the keel to the top of the bridge was 104 feet. Wowza. Um, Damn. I know. So she measured. How many stories is that? About mm-hmm. 10 ish? 10 foot high ceilings? I can do math. I mean, I would think, right? Yeah. Because be if, if it had about seven or ten decks, it probably was like at least... But the fucking poor people deck was probably like five feet tall. Oh, yeah. Well, we'll, we're going to talk about that, too. Um, oh. So, <laughs> eventually, in 45 minutes. So, she... Let's see, let's see. She... she, um, she So, she, she, and she weighed about uh, 46,000 tons. Which is insane. So, couple elephants. Just cup, just just a couple elephants. Um, and then it had a, a passenger capacity of uh, three thousand five hundred and forty-seven souls, because that's what they said back then. What was the biggest boat before that? Do you know? I did not research that. No. God damn uh, it! No. But she was the sure biggest of the Google class, it. and so the reason why there was like the, the reason why these ships were getting built is because there was a rivalry. Um, not in the same shipyard, obviously, but like with a different company, and so instead of and that was like it was super fast but so instead of going like trying to match the the speed they just went for like luxurious and longer wink mm-hmm. and by wink i just i couldn't do it and i just blinked at you i was like <laughs> blink. You did. 
Shay just winked at me with both of her <laughs> eyes at the same time. I just blinked at you. That was impressive. Was it though? Oh my god, my that synapses aren't firing all right. Um, okay, so then it t- so um, <laughs> so it took oh, two god. years and two months to build the Titanic, and it took around three thousand men out of the fourteen thousand employed at the Harland and Wolf shipyards, um, and as of two thousand twelve, um, to build the Titanic. To but damn yeah, I know. Um, 3,000 people built that yeah, boat. out of like 14,000 people that worked. So just 3,000 of them were just... four cents an hour. I think they were paid... Uh, yeah, they were paid um, two pounds per day for a skilled worker, one pound a day for the unskilled worker. Which... How do which they, a lot of those unskilled ones probably were better than the skilled. Mm-hmm. Or not. So, who knows? So according to some historians, there are some reports of slag that had been found in the rivets of the Titanic. And slag is just like the glass-like byproduct of like leftover from um from a metal and it's separated from like the raw ore so essentially weak so it just created some weakness around that bolt um so um problem number one yes so um reports from harland and wolf uh allegedly speak of a lack of skilled riveters available and it is thought that they simply just settled for subpar work hashtag future uber elevate pilots (laughs) perfect <laughs> um so yeah so it's, it's round two so yeah um so yeah so they they there was a suspicion that they just needed the bodies essentially so they were just trying to get this boat built as fast as possible which if you think about it back in like 1911 yeah 1911 1910 to get this boat of that magnitude built in two fucking years is insane yeah um Hurry up, I need to make my money. Hurry up, please. Rose has got a date with destiny. Um, With the heart of the ocean. She does. So Titanic was equipped with two uh, reciprocating four-cylinder triple expansion steam engines. Say that four times fast. I don't even know the first four words you said. It's fine. (laughs) And one low-pressure Parsons turbine, which powered three propellers. I'm just getting super technical to let you know what. Maybe somebody might know that. I don't know. So or they don't. Now we do. Yes. So there were 29 boilers within the ship, and they were fired by 159 coal-burning furnace, furnaces that That's made... hot down there. Yeah. So Remember that made... Remember that scene? Oh, you do. They were all dirty. And they ran through there like, man, we're going to have sex. Um, <laughs> <laughs> make it hotter in here. Um, yes. That made it possible... Okay. That made possible a top speed of 23 knots, a whopping 26 miles per hour Woo! of that behemoth. So, That's how fast it traveled? Only 26 miles per hour. That was it. How much does it, how fast does a cruise ship travel now? Probably, I mean, those things are so massive. Because, like, I if, guess you, you, can't if you really, think you about can't it, you can't. You go, can't. like, 100 miles. <laughs> Can you imagine, like, hey, yeah. we're going to turn right. Everybody, hold on. Oh, you're all drunk? Just stay inside. Um <gasps> Can you imagine? Oh, my God. What if a cruise ship went 100 miles an hour? Mm. Everyone hold on to your daiquiri. I'm Googling this. Um, so, okay, well, let's, I'll wait till that happens. I mean, I'm sure most people know this. It's, I don't. It's the same, 23 miles an hour. Yeah, so, like, it actually went pretty fucking fast, I guess, for the time, but you don't think that that's fast, but that, you like, also are thinking, like, this almost a thousand foot ship. You don't really want it to, like, make a hard right <laughs> really fast at, like, a fucking even 50 miles per hour. Can you imagine? Oh, Grandma. And it would have just tipped over. It was nice knowing you. Yeah. Breaking in half. It's true. Um, and So I didn't know this. So only three of the four 62-foot funnels were functional. Like, so you know, like, the funnels that are on top of the ship that would let all the, yeah. like, the steam and shit out? So only three were functional. How many did they have? They had four. Four? Six? Four? I thought you said six? No, no they only had, they had four, but... Only three are functional. The fourth, which served only for ventilation purposes, was added just to make the ship look more impressive. So. Here, let's just put this just um, look- extra thousand million pound tube on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> on the boat. Make it fun. look fancier, Bruce as me. Three um, isn't enough. No, it's never good enough. And of course, we all know about the watertight compartments. Like there were 16 of them, which had doors that would close automatically if the water level reached a certain height. The ship was designed so that it could remain afloat if any two of the compartments were flooded or if the first four were flooded. Um, But it actually was discovered when um, Titanic, or or, I'm sorry, when it was discovered that 
when the Titanic collided with an iceberg, that the first six actually were flooded. Um, but honestly, in all like the books and all of all, all I mean, they, they didn't have any lids on the top. So like, even if I, I just didn't understand like how, that was what, supposed to what, trap the like water. how it was supposed to trap the water. Cause it wouldn't it eventually like, but maybe they were saying that they would hopefully at least it would slow it down enough that they could get help and then they could eventually make it not sink. I don't know what the thought process was, but I'm like, I always thought that. It when obviously I was, didn't work. Yeah, no matter what, it didn't work. So, also a giant fucking iceberg crashed into the side of it. It'll get you every time. So the total cost of the Titanic construction amounted to $7.5 million, roughly $180 million today. Oh, my God. So how many Heart of the Oceans do you think that was? Three. <laughs> three. Just three. Cal um, was a real rich man. He was, until fucking he put a dick bullet in his fucking head. So eight was the number of uh, construction workers that were killed during the build. Um, 246 were the number of injuries recorded during the build. Um, and 20 was the number of horses needed to transport the main anchor. So they literally used horsepower. Oh my God, 20 horsepower. 20 horsepower. So the first class public, so, oh, I just skipped over something totally. Oh my uh, God, did they have to use horses the whole time building that ship? I think a lot of it. Yeah, that's why I'm super impressed by the two. I mean, because it was, I don't, because back. Who the fuck? I mean, wow, I, they might have had, they, they had, I mean, they obviously, they had some cars and they had whatever, but for they the most cars. part, I mean, it was, it wasn't like they had giant fucking cranes to lift shit. They didn't have horsepower cars. No, it, like they had. It like was all two. manpower. That's mm-hmm. probably people died so quickly because they just had hernias all the time. So, um, 250 people were injured? 246, yeah. Pretty close. Out of 3,000? Out of, free, uh, yeah, 3,000. I'm fact checking right now, I was like, bitch. out of, what? um, so here are like the class accommodations. So the first class had public rooms, including a dining saloon, a reception room, a restaurant, a lounge reading and writing room, a smoking room, and the veranda cafes in palm courts. There was also a palm? gym. What's a, what's a palm court? I think like it a was, palm trees? No, I think it's like a, a court. I think it's a court. It's just like, just like fucking multiple fucking lounging areas. And then they had, there also was a gym and a squash court. And oh, squash. Squash. And the Titanic and Olympic were the first liners in history to have like this, like a gym and squash courts. And those are my favorite pictures of like in the gym because it always like looks like a guy in his like long johns. He's like, I'm just doing my row exercises. Mm. <laughs> or like some lady in like a dress. I'm just doing my lemon twist. Right. So just like, and it's always like like a lady in a, like a, like a petticoat, like riding a little stationary bike. <laughs> I was like, what? Inner petty. <laughs> inner petticoat. I don't even know. But it always seems like that. Corset. And I doubt like there was, there pff, women weren't allowed to exercise. What am I talking about? Probably back then. You just fucking tighten that corset up and you'll be fine. Mm, exactly. Gyms aren't for women. Um, so the first class also enjoy, enjoyed several Turkish and electric baths. Which, do you know what an electric bath is? It sounds terrifying, doesn't it? A death trap? <laughs> I'm t- no, which I didn't know what it was. And it's... It's just electric shocks going through you in a bathtub. <laughs> <laughs> it's for when you're real sad. Um, mm. It's... They were. It's well, a tanning bed. Which is now my... F- I'm going to use that for tanning. Like, I'm going to go to the electric bath. I'm like, that is Wait, fucking what awful. did they do back then? You definitely died from that. And no, I think it was... I don't think you're supposed like to stay in them very long, long. They were smarter back then? Pro- or, I just don't think... I just think that if you did, you'd die. All right. Electric baths. Electric baths. It. But I just... I didn't ne- never heard of electric baths. The first time I read it, I was like, that sounds not good. But Okay. Um, a yeah. cabinet in which ultraviolet light is applied to the user yeah. via lamps. So, but yeah, back in 1912, I probably wouldn't have gotten into that. I don't even get into the ones no. like in 2019. They terrify me. No. I watched too don't much Final that. Destination. Also, don't do that. Yeah. Is there a tanning bed accident in Final Destination? Yeah. She gets locked in one and it fries her. And like, you, oh, it's disgusting. Oh my. Oh, it's disgusting. <laughs> Those movies, how many are there? Nine? There's like 17. Oh my God. So, okay. So I take- watched the one with the logging behind the fucking trailer yep. and... I can never. Nope. I can't drive every time. A I'm car. like, I'm gonna get over. I don't like even care. Die. Yep. Anyway, so Titanic provided 39 uh, private suites, 30 on the bridge deck, and this is all for first class. 30 on the bridge deck and nine on the shelter deck. Uh, the suites included bedrooms with private toilets 
and all had up to five different rooms, two bedrooms and two wardrobe rooms and a bathroom. Yeah. And then, and then, but they also held like, like a different side. So like, if you just didn't want to spend your fucking Dallas and you were just like, I just want the experience. I just don't want to spend like a million dollars to fucking stay there. Um, I don't they, need five rooms I on need, a boat. I don't, I don't need like a fucking penthouse on my, go- on my goddamn boat. Um, they also had 350 cheaper standard cabins with like just single beds. So just like four rooms. Mm, okay. Um, so the second class. The second class passengers accommodations um, were found like over seven decks. Um, exits were either like by like the second class grand stairway or an electric elevator. An electric elevator, which ran up and down all seven decks. Um, second class accommodations um, were provided in either two or four birth rooms. So they were like, they just had like, just you could put more people in it instead of just having oh. a single bed. Um, so like a double, like if you were like to go to the La Quinta mm. or like the Double Tree and you Got get it. like the two be- the, the, the two beds instead in of room. the ones. Got it. Um, so I'm... Um, a maximum of 550 passengers could be accommodated for the second class. The rooms were fitted in enamel white with mahogany furniture. Um, that was That's pretty nice for second class. It's pretty nice. Although, like, honestly, if you look at some of the pictures, it's like the first class is like just this beautiful, yeah, gaudy g- decor. But obviously, it was standard for the time, and it was just over the top, beautiful. And then their second class t- dining room, even though it was pretty prestigious is to look like oh and here you go seating for all at the golden corral yeah um so um the staterooms of the second class were very similar to like the standard cabins of the first class so just like for the one like the the second bedroom down like just for not for all the bedrooms gotcha um so the third class the third class accommodations was like obviously much less luxurious than the second so than the second class and um the third class, or what they were called, steerage passengers, um, they still like it though. They they still enjoyed the levels of luxury compared to like most liners of the day. So they, because Titanic really and White Star wanted to like, since a lot of these people were coming to go start a whole new life in America, so they wanted to give them some experience. Like even though yeah, so it was just a ship to transport them to New York to america right it wasn't like right it wasn't like a cruise no for them because i mean like a lot of like for instance like they gave like they gave like they fed them which for a lot of third class and other liners of that day they like you had to bring your own food um it was way more cramped they so they set up the rooms a little bit so even though that's nice so like i think in steerage before like there wasn't like separate doors so even though you're experiencing with strangers like in james cameron's rendition it's actually it's that was on point, but and a lot of liners at the day, yeah, like he's they legit as fuck. Yeah, they at the, a lot of liners of the day, they just didn't have those doors at, at all. They just had bunk beds just down like in the bottom of a ship. Mm. So Titanic was actually pretty prestigious for steerage, mm-hmm. even though it is what it, it is. It is what it is. Um, you know, they say that like they they like yeah, we just want to give them like kind of an experience, so we want to feed them and everything else. Well, that's um, nice. They but they to feed but the they people pr- that bought tickets on their ship. <laughs> right. But they pretty much had, like, a galley and a sitting and smoking area compared to everybody else. And a dancing area. <laughs> That's exactly how it sounded. Those were the on songs the they sang. Um, the first class Turkish... I love that scene. That's, like, my favorite scene. It was a pretty time. cute scene. Um, the first class Turkish bath was larger than the third class galley. And... A thousand passengers would rely on the galley, but only a handful of people would like use the Turkish bath. So, cause Fuckers. yeah, so like think about it, like it was like there was like well they didn't pay for it, right? Shay. So there were okay. like there was like three hundred people in first class, maybe six hundred people in second class, and they had like over a thousand people in third class, and then they were expected to sit in an area that was smaller than or a, a, as big as like a luxury a luxury for first class, which is ridiculous. To eat their food that they were so privileged to have and they didn't have to bring their fucking sandwiches. At least you get food, you fucking asshole. Pretty much. So, um, also, I guess there wasn't a thousand people down there, but there was like more than any other class, like 800, something like that. So more than 700 people had to share two bathtubs in third class. So they all had to share a communal bathroom and it was only two bathtubs for all of them. Wait. Yeah. For how many people? 
for over 700 people that were wait un- there was two fucking bathtubs in down third there? class that was it and then you had to share it like everyone else like second and first class had their own private bathrooms third class did not they had two communal bathrooms and two bathtubs that they all had to share between like and they Isn't had that fucked up for the ship yeah no, I mean, that's just, that was standard back then. So it's like, whatever, just fucking never, never. Right? Go in a pail and throw it right, overboard. you get to fucking bathe once. Well, you'll be bathing soon in the yeah, water because ex- we're going to sink ya. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So the Titanic Jesus. was equipped with, to carry 64 lifeboats, but it only carried 20. Um, do, do, yeah, dude, pretty much. I mean, that's exactly what it was. I mean, there's really, I mean, there was no laws. So due to the advanced advancements that had been made in shipbuilding it was not necessary quote unquote for boats to carry more lifeboats enough for 1178 people because they thought like whatever happened they would get to the ship in time in order to save everybody even if it did sink yeah yeah we're fucking we have no proof of this we have no idea how we're no, gonna do it but just wild fine. shots in the dark and who cares it's just human it's life it's never been done but it's <laughs> just human life whatever so the maiden voyage as long as the rich people get off first mm-hmm. it doesn't matter Mm-hmm. So the main voyage from Southampton to New York was supposed to last a week, so seven days. So just imagine, like, seven days, and you're in third class, and you're like, you got two bathrooms for seven fucking days for all you 700, 800, whatever the number was, fuckers. Good luck. Here's a pail. Um, Hopefully the toilet doesn't clog. Yeah, right? And if it does, because it's 1912, and it probably will, you fucked. You better go overboard. Yeah. So from Southampton, they sailed from, I believe it's pronounced Cher- Charburg. I could at uh, Cherburg. I could. Sure. I'm probably slaughtering that. Cherburg. I'm so sorry. So, and then on to Queenstown, picking up more passengers as they went, and then the next few days was smooth sailing. Hashtag <laughs> jokes. <laughs> um, and then just a random horrible fact, because that's what we do. Um, the ship burned around 600 tons of coal a day, hand shoveled into the furnaces by a team of 176 men. Almost 100 tons of ash were ejected into the sea every 24 hours. Hashtag global warming. Mm, started with the Titanic. <laughs> Fuck you, White Star. Oh. It anyway started up and then yeah yeah that's fucking. Crazy. So, like, honestly, like, there was really nothing, like, super eventful. And actually, James Cameron's movie is pretty on point. Um, when I was kind of doing all the research again, I mean, it's it was pretty on point with, with everything. There was yeah, not a whole lot of... Yeah, love story not yes, being... Yes, exactly. Not real so, but, people, but, but like, yeah, but it's... He made sure that he did everything. But, yeah, it was pretty uneventful. Um, and honestly, the, I mean, the whole getting the the ice warnings and everything else, that all happened, and, and absolutely true. So... Um, at, uh, at 1140, uh, sailing near the Grand Banks of Newfoundland, um, lookouts Frederick Fleet and Rene... Ooh, wow, that's a, that's an interesting name. Rene... Rene Gold? Ooh. I'm gonna say Reggie. <laughs> Reggie. He probably went by Reggie. Um, and... Reg. Reg- right. And Reginald Lee spotted an iceberg directly ahead of the Titanic. How did they, like, when? They, sp- what do you mean? Like, they they spotted it, like, literally, it was, because the sea, it actually was, it was so calm, which is super abnormal. And it was, like, they couldn't even, because usually what, what the what they would do at the crow's nest, they would be able to see from a distance um, if the waves were hitting on the iceberg. But the sea was so dead calm, they couldn't even see that. And apparently there's a rumor, um, like a theory, that they actually didn't have binoculars with them. So, like, somehow, like, the binoculars got misplaced. So, they were just, like, kind of counting on being able their to see it from their see- eyes. Yeah. And they, and they figured anything. And you can't turn a fucking boat well, that big. they figured, and this is, this is also, I've kind of read, like, various sources. Um, but they also believed, any, everybody believed, even the captain believed, that anything that was big enough to sink the Titanic, they would be able to see way ahead of time. Mm-hmm. And this was like the iceberg was, well, I mean, also, there was nothing above it. And then, I mean, everyone true. knows that everything below is, it's way bigger under, but they, I mean, it was that's small. That's true. So they didn't think, and they, honestly, they they couldn't see the waves hitting it at all. So it was a dead, eerie calm. And I guess what they said, it's like a, it's a, um, 
it's a phenomenon like you see a mirage in the desert but they do it with water it something happens with water so they think that that was what was happening that night is that they were almost seeing mirages and it was at night and they couldn't see and it was like i think a moonless night as well so they, they it was pitch black but you know nothing can sink it so it's fine Damn, that's insane. Like, yeah. that's like, they thought of, like, everything. Mm-hmm. Or they thought they did, mm-hmm. you know? They're like, we fucking yeah. have our fucking 20 boats. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. We're like, going to be fine. We have our six compartments. Yeah. Can fill up with water. It's perfect. It's fine. And this guy Don't doesn't have an his, iceberg. This guy doesn't have his binoculars, but, you know, like. And they probably didn't even, like. But, again, they thought, they legitimately thought that anything that they could see with our human eye that was big enough to sink, they would be able to turn that ship in time. And it was also thought that the rudder of the Titanic was too small for the ship. So it was just, it took too long. Oh my God. Too hard to stop, Lord. Gotta hurry up, just make it a little smaller. It'll be fine, we'll just go a little slower. It's true. So First Officer Murdoch gave the order to hard to starboard, um, which was using the traditional turn to port left. Um, starboard! Yes. Shit was too late. And that big old fucking iceberg. So it caused the hull, hull to buckle in multiple places. Shooting out rivets and causing like the first five water, actually the first six water, water tight compartments to flood. So that's where they thought with the slag is like that it just, the rivet just popped out like glass essentially. So they just buckled super easy. Um, so the first, so the first and second class passengers were woken up like in a calm and rational manner. So just like in James Cameron's rendition, where they're like, hey. You want to get on up? Just get on up there and just, just go put your life out. I don't know why they talk like that, but, like, it's fine. They were very um, fucking calm. And they were so calm. They're just like, it's fine. Like, just a bit of just whatever little maintenance. It's fine. But just just to be safe, like, go upstairs, please. Um, And the third class passengers were, like, waking up just like they were in the movie. Just, like, get up. <gasps> get your fucking asses up and we got to go. Um, you might have a life jacket. Go find one. Yeah. So, like, the doors thrown open. Like, a lot of these people. And a lot of these people... They did not speak English. Um, mm. So, like, the confusion was completely massive. And even though the part, like, in James Cameron's movie where, like, they locked the third class passengers, like, in that gate, yeah. that didn't actually happen. Oh. Um, they did have the gates closed for, like, a while. Just they were waiting for the captain. Like, the attendants were waiting to see what, like, the captain could Wanted. was going to say. Because, essentially, like, the, the third class they weren't, and the classes really weren't allowed to, like, kind of go in each other's spaces. Like, yeah. But the third class had a deck that they oh, could go to. Oh, I know that to. from the movie. Yeah, so they had a deck they could go to. So James Cameron obviously, like, dramatized it a little bit, but that's pretty much one of the only things that he really dramatized, besides, obviously, the love story, which didn't happen. But he... Or did it. Or did it. Um, but they... But even though that didn't... That part didn't happen, um, the, the corridors were like a fucking goddamn maze. And they couldn't speak. And there were seven, eight hundred people, people down there trying mm-hmm. to get up them. So, and not only is people <laughs> can't speak two. English, but they can't read it either. So, just trying to find this fucking like, just they couldn't like, they just couldn't get out. Like, can you fucking imagine? And like, like I don't, know. I just don't even know. But like, no, anyway, is... but it's like okay, like think of it like this. It's like the labyrinth, like that Jim Hansen's labyrinth, but with no singing. Yeah, just basically. like that. Like there's fucking <laughs> riddles everywhere, and you're just like, I just want to get outside. I'm just trying to help find me. light. Exactly. So, um, so, like, and also I thought about this too when I was researching. I'm like, think about like you are going through this fucking maze, and you're like, okay, I feel like I'm making headway, and all of a sudden, but you're like, you can obviously feel the ships going up, and it just snaps, and you're like, oh, well, fuck me. Or you like go to the corridor, and then a giant fucking waterfall of water. I know. I'm sure um, that happened a lot to them. I know. It's so sad. So many people were confused about what, like, where they should go after the, the order of the launch boats had been given. There should have been actually a lifeboat training um, on the 14th of April. So that night that it sank. Nuh-uh. Yeah. But the captain canceled it so people could go to church. Bet you they were praying to Jesus now. Um, yeah, so everyone thought going out there with their sweet Lord now. Yeah, pretty much. So everyone thought like going outside was absurd, thinking it was all a joke. Um, mostly because they weren't told. Yeah, it's a joke. But everyone, because everyone weren't, they weren't told what was happening. Most people weren't even told that it was sinking until 30 minutes after they, they hit the iceberg. 
So they thought it was a fucking joke. And again, these people like think like the ship's not sink, like it's unsinkable. So people yeah. could kind of see like it was starting to kind of list a little bit. And then they were like, oh, okay. But it was 30 minutes into the disaster. So nobody was panicking yet. They're just like, this is stupid. We're going inside. And I'm just going to go have another fucking daiquiri and another little John Collins. You leave my, me alone. My John Collins. Leave me and alone. My, and my fucking um, centerpiece of celery. Mm-hmm. Because Funny celery story. was something that was served in the first dinner to the first class. Like they had a, like this big. I read something about how celery was like a yeah, they really actually prestigious have, thing. They have the like day. a whole like menu, and it's like a lot of things. Was also like um, they served ox tongue mm. for the first class, and that sounds disgusting. But I almost made another drink. It was um, it was a what was it called? The Ramona Romaine um, Punch. Mm-hmm. But it was like. Okay, now start making your Italian meringue. I'm like, nope, not doing that. Um, but I'll meringue sh- and like she called for shaved ice. I'm like, that was way too intricate for me to do this this time. But like it, it sounds like a good drink. But it was like the like, it was like it was like the fucking tits apparently back then. It was a and it was a um, palate cleanser between meals for first class. And but it I had almost an Italian meringue in it. It has like an drink? Italian meringue in it. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. you just shake you can, raw egg whites and shit you, now. You, so. can, you can, and there, there's a rendition from that. I'm like, I would want to do the like the fucking how they used to do it to really taste how that is, because I bet you it's fucking bomb. We, we definitely should, but I was like, I don't have time for that right now. Um, Shay, why don't you make me that? Why don't you make me? Just whip that up for me. Um, whip it up. So, <laughs> let's see. Where are we at? Okay, so eventually Titanic was nosed down. And it was pulled under by the weight of the water, obviously, in her compartments and lifting her stern into the air. The even distribution, the uh, the even, the uneven distribution of weight centered a, like, oh, I'm sorry, created a tear in the ship's midsection between the third and the fourth funnels. Rivets popped and survivors reported hearing the horrendous noise as all the cargo and the holds and everything that was bolted down, like, just fucking slid forward. And... Ugh, this, that noise in the movies like fucking cringeworthy. But this, this thought kind of fucked me up. So, so a number of passengers and crew were believed to be below decks, obviously, um, as the ship sank. But um, so those that could probably found air pockets to breathe in the corners of the submerged rooms. So they probably like the ship snapped, but there was still air in the ship. So. People probably just didn't know what was fucking happening, especially people in third class where there's no fucking windows. They've probably fa- and I mean, if you think about like how fast it was accelerating down t- two and a half miles to the ocean floor. So they probably felt found air pockets to breathe in the corners of the submerged rooms. But there were obviously it would be short. The extreme pressure building around them would probably soon kill them. And those who did not die of exposure to the freezing water. I'm sorry. The extreme pressure building around them would soon kill those who did not die of exposure to the freezing water as they, as the ship accelerated toward the dark abyssal plane so, like, that would while, become her final resting place. So while it was sinking... People were probably still people alive. People thought they were... S- they they were, probably didn't know what the fuck was going on because they were probably disoriented. And if if the freezing... Oh if they were God, in that air... that is fucked right, up right, to right? think So about. like if the air pressure... Like, I'm sorry, if they didn't... If they didn't drown in the freezing temperatures and they found like a pocket of air that was still like there but i'm sure it only lasted like maybe a minute if that the pressure of going down so fast just crushed them it just crushed their body oh i just ugh, that just freaks me out can you imagine that is a horrific death oh anyway while you're before that for the like yeah. how long did it take to sink you're going to tell me. That's no. so funny. It's the next bullet. Perfect. So it we took knew. two hours and 40 minutes for the Titanic to sink beneath the surface. So from the moment that it hit the iceberg, it took two, like roughly two and a half hours. And half an hour, they were just dicking around because they thought it wasn't real. And that's part of the reason why the um, life boats were launched like half full because nobody wanted to get in them they just thought like this is fucking- like i want to go like, get another drink margaret and i was like go- your first class you guys need to go first so now we're yeah. fucking only filling these halfway yeah even though the fucking poor people yeah. need to get up here too but whatever just go drink your fucking manhattan and your john fucking collins yes and just don't give a shit 
That's exactly what oh. went on. They just, they just, they thought it was a fucking. Well, I mean, I, pro- I mean, I it was know. bullshit. They just thought I like actually because they it, didn't want to leave the warmth of the ship, so they're just like, this is fucking stupid. Like we're not doing that. Like now, and also like that wasn't. I mean, for, obviously it was the one of the first like big luxury whatever mm-hmm. boats. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's like, but nowadays if someone told you that though, like, yeah. I mean, obviously it would be made more of a big deal, but I'm just saying like. No one would be like, oh, that's not a big deal. I yeah. Feel like, well, they, they also weren't told. They were told again 30 minutes. So how are they supposed to know how that's serious true. it was when they're like, no, it's it's fine. Like <sighs> nobody, if nobody's telling us it's sinking, then it's, sh- then why would we get on a fucking boat? So they were launching them just half full. And that's why they were launching them half full. Um, so um, when the wow, Titanic. that's fucked. Right. So the, when the Titanic sank, the temperature of the ocean water was only 28 degrees. That's four degrees below the freezing point. And it wasn't drowning that killed victims, but rather... How was it not a frozen... <laughs> right? But ra- but because it's so massive, I guess. No, I, maybe, yeah. maybe the salt. Um, yeah, but rather so. hypothermia and cardiac arrest. The water was so cold, most passengers were dead within minutes. Only 13 passengers were plucked from the water and saved. Only These, 13? That's it. And Rose the, didn't stand a chance. No. She would have been that dead. board dead. was bigger than... For the both of them. Thank God I found this one door. <laughs> These pass. The, the, Bring your man on it, you dumb bitch. Have him warm you up. Stupid. So those pass. Those survivors said that the water felt like knives against their skin when they they went in the water. So more than fifteen hundred passengers died during the sinking of the Titanic. Only three hundred and sixty bodies were ever found. Um, Wait, how many people died? Fifteen hundred. Out of like the two thousand something. Watch, I'll get to those numbers here in a minute. Um, the SS California was less than 20 miles from the Titanic hit the iceberg. Multiple distress signals were sent out, but the Californians, um, the I think that's how you say it. <laughs> Wireless operators had already gone to bed. Um, the only ship to respond was the RMS Carpathia. There should be an Carpathia. alarm for that shit. You would think. Sure there is now. Well, yeah, I'm sure there was a lot of things that were installed after this. Um, was the RMS Carpathia 58 miles away. Even at full speed, it took Carpathia four hours to reach the Titanic's survivor surviving passengers, only because they're going like twenty six fucking miles an hour. Jesus, the other one was only twenty two miles away. The other one was only twenty miles away, so they could have gotten to their ha- like in t- in hour. two hours. At so what? the minute, like I'm sure, is the minute like that boat slipped in, they probably could have saved everybody. At least way more people than that. You're right. They probably could have. I mean. It Just does, so you know, we hit an iceberg. Maybe yeah. someone should come find us. Please. So. um it's so crazy. So then. And also just thinking about the time period, too. It's just like. Yeah. They didn't fucking know anything. No, no. I mean, they knew a lot of shit, but. No, they didn't. You don't know. They didn't know. And they again, they thought it was unsinkable. They thought like nothing could. Nothing could hurt it. Um, so the number That's, fluctuates. From source to Life. source on how many people were on board. But um, from this is kind of like about the roundabout number, what it kind of ended up with like across a couple sources. So there were 329 first class passengers aboard and 199 survived. There was 285 second class passengers aboard and 119 survived. There was 710 third class passengers aboard and only 174 survived. Because they probably were just running around in a fucking circle down there. There were 899 crew members aboard and only 214 survived. So only so only around 705-ish people survived out of roughly 2,205 2, people. Fractions. Wow. Nothing. So, and actually this is, an, an, it, this was just an interesting fact. So every... In, Every engineer aboard the Titanic went down with the ship because they stayed behind to run the power so that others could have had, like, a chance to escape. So they just stayed. So, again, wow. James Cameron was pretty on point. Like, right until the end, that shit, that power stayed on, and then it it went under. It broke. Um, and it broke, and it was, like, mm-hmm. lights flashing. Yep, and that was it. Do you think that the little classical music men were playing music? There are rumors about that. They They do say that they were playing up until the end but they don't know if they actually were going it's just it fluctuates from source to source as well whether they played all the way till the end or like one of the last songs that they played was near thy god to me or whatever that one that one Mm -hmm. that one song is um 
But it was pretty close to the end. And actually, the, the old couple, like you saw, like, cradling in themselves in the bed, they actually didn't die in a bed. That was actually the owner, the co-owner of Macy's at the time with his wife, Ida, I believe. I could be saying that wrong. Um, but they actually didn't die in their bed. They just, um, she wouldn't, she, he put her in a lifeboat. And when she was told, like, no, he can't get in, she, she wouldn't, she just got out. And they went to the deck and they just waited till the end. So he they that that was true, but just in a in different a yeah. environment. But um, it was true, and he was the co-owner of Macy's. Yeah, that's crazy. And like the whole thing where there was like a there was like a there's like a story about how Thomas Andrews was the guy who who was the architect of the ship. Um, like you see him when Jack and Rose are running through, mm-hmm. and he goes, she goes, Mister Andrews, and he's like just wait, looking at a clock, and he's just standing in the in the sitting room essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, that th- there's also claims that that didn't actually happen. Like he actually was way more heroic. He had more of a heroic end where he was actually getting people in lifeboats and stuff like that. But Bruce says, been say Ismay is still an asshole. So, yeah. you know, you just, yeah, whatever, you know, so, um, you just roll with the punches. You just roll with the goddamn punches. So the remains of the, tan- tan- the bleh, so the remains of the Titanic were lost for 73 years in 1985, the year I was born. Um, so, yeah, they didn't have technology to go down and fucking look around. No, they didn't. Because they didn't. I mean, again, it was like pressure crushing depths. So the shipwreck two was. Two and a half miles down. Mm-hmm. So the shipwreck was found 2000. That's. Or tw- sorry. No, you're good. So, I keep interrupting, but that is insane to think about two and a half miles down into the bottom. Yeah. Into the ocean. Yeah. So the shipwreck was found 12,500 feet. So a little over two miles. So about two and a half. It's like, I think it's like 2.3 or something like that in the ocean near the coast of Newfoundland and the, like in the assassination, obviously like still like it took off after 1985 too, which is insane. Cause like, yeah, I mean, how do you figure out how to make technology? It really goes back to like, I just need one more do over. Eesh. I mean, seriously, like how many Fido's do we got left? Oh Bruce. My God. So, and then there were like hundreds of, artifacts that have been taken up from the site and they have like ended up in museums and others have been but like sold off start... in auctions for like hundreds of thousands of dollars that didn't start till 85 mm-hmm. and i think really they only started pulling up stuff till in like in the 90s so, so titanic was like pretty like all right we should fucking make a movie about this like pretty relevant so actually the titanic Ish. the first titanic movie was made um i think like two months after the disaster before the talkies um oh. so it was a silent film so and before then like before the talkies. before the talkies i was like um, i don't know what you mean by that but i'm just gonna go yeah, with it you don't that's actually a term the talkies it's called the talkies so like learn something yeah so day. it's the the movies like the after the silent films were called the talkies um which makes it's literally we should go see a talkie we should soon. go see a talkie soon um Everyone actually believe in that first film. It's depicted as the ship goes down in one piece, and people actually there was like a big like theory like before 1985 where they found it. They're like, did it go down in one piece? Because witnesses had different claims, so everyone didn't know until 85 when they found the two pieces. In mm. so it's like there was the stern, which was obviously like the the one that you it's the iconic where you just were Rose and Jacker and everything else, and then you see. Yes. I'm sorry, the stern, the bow, and the the stern, where it's like it's separated by like a humongous debris field, and then you have like it's like it's way less. You can't really tell what it looks like because it's all fucking smashed up and everything else. So, um, they laid that theory to rest when they saw it in two pieces. So they knew it split. Aren't there like ghost stories about like ships, like sunken ships and shit? I think I did not research that part because it was already taking me too long. I was to just this. Th- no, that's fine. Yeah. But I'm just no, thinking, it's true. Like, that'd be yeah. a great. That's a great there's one. like a show called like Ghost Ships. Oh, yeah, for sure. There, and there isn't it like a doc. Like, well, a- there are ones like that. It like it steers itself and it does like and it's like ones that have been left floating like they've just been abandoned. And then they're just like they're called like ghost ships and there's just no crew on them. They just abandon them. And some ghost ships have like history of like there's um, of like they'll have documentation of why they left or whatever or like they're like oh yeah no we left that boat there just hanging out and this one or like our and other ones there's just these ghost ships and they have no idea what happened to the crew and they're just floating 
It's weird. Ooh, that's, that's a, a good, good one, though. Paranormal that's a one. that's a great paranormal one. Well, keep that in my back pocket. Mm-hmm. That and the Bermuda Triangle would be a good one too. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Anyway, um, God, this is gonna take me so long to edit, but I don't I'm even sorry. care. It's fine because it's interesting. I'm, that's why we're doing this. Mm-hmm. Um. So yeah. So so yeah. So um. So yeah, there have been hundreds of artifacts that have been taken off from, that have been taken from the site. And some have ended up in museums, and others have have been sold off in auctions. Uh, like for like some like have been like sold for a hundred thousand dollars. I believe there was one piece. It was one of the cellos that was played by the band. They found it, and it was sold for one point seven million dollars. Still intact. Still intact. Fucking, they do not make shit like they used no, to. No, they That's don't. For damn Can it sure. withstand the pressure of this? They're like the let's, Titanic. They're nope. like, let's try this silly putty. <laughs> I wonder if there's any <laughs> silly putty down on the Titanic. So a big piece is what it's called, actually. They call it a big piece. Was recovered from the wreckage site. So a big piece of part of the actual Titanic. Um, the big piece. Yes. It's actually like, what do we call it? Let's just call it a big piece. Um, it was un- like it was recovered in 1998. And it was put at the Luxor for the in-house Titanic exhibit, which I'm not sure if it's there today. Um, which was awesome. I went to it. Yay. And it was, I was like a fucking kid in a candy store because I wanted to touch that fucking, because it was like right fucking, like right at your face. And you could touch it, obviously, but you didn't touch it. But mm-hmm. it's a fucking museum. But it was one of those things that I've never had that urge in a museum to touch anything. But that one, I just wanted to fucking touch it so bad. But obviously. You probably would have gotten fucking. There were guards everywhere. That I couldn't touch it. But. You um, need to be but exercised. You, but you get, I mean, you could get really close to it. So you could, I mean, it was. I mean, obviously, it didn't have How any, big was the it piece? It didn't have an original. I, I mean, it was it was a big piece. I mean, it was a. I mean, it had to be at least three stories high. I mean, it was a big fucking piece. It was huge. How maybe, do you fucking maybe not three stories. Transport maybe that. two stories. They have giant cranes now. I mean, that's not a big deal. They didn't have to take forty five horses to just get it where it needed to go. All right, we got to get our yeah. horses so, on. So what you do is you take, and if the exhibit's not fucking huge. The big part of the exhibit is to see the big piece. Big piece. So you go, but you can, um, they have artifacts and stuff in there, um, but you pretty much, you go, and I think the Holocaust Museum is a lot like this too, is you get somebody's story and you kind of go through and either you survive or you don't, but you kind of, you go through their entire story. It's really fucking cool. Oh my God. It's really I interesting. I that yeah. somewhere. Yeah, it's super, super cool. And then at the very end, which I didn't know, like, so I had no idea that I was going to get to see this piece of the Titanic. Um, so when we get to the end, I was like, <gasps> like you kind of go into this other room and it's like, all oh, these fucking spotlights show, sh- shining on it. And I'm just like, I was, I was blown away. But it Where looks, is it now? I, th- it might be still at the Luxor. I'll have to look it up. But um, I stayed there. I didn't know about that shit. I was just a drunk college student staying there for four days with my 13 friends. When did you go? Um, 2009 or 10. Oh, shit. Yeah, girl. Shit, shit. Fucking Vegas trip. Oh, I think it's still there. College Vegas trip. That was a fucking... Woo-wee! Yeah, you can... So- <laughs> um. <laughs> You can still, mm. yeah, you can still go. Um, it's still there. Um, Maybe I did see it. I was just my, half asleep. You didn't appreciate it yet. It's okay. Sober. But it was. it's not like, obviously, you can't see, like, the original paint on it. It's pretty, like, it's, like, brown and rusted and shit like yeah. that. But it's still cool to just, like, just no, that's fucking insane. see it. It's insane. It's, yeah, like, we pulled this the little sh- portholes and shit. Like, it's crazy. I, I thought it was super cool. Oh, the portholes. Mm-hmm. Um... So, sadly, there's a rust-eating bacteria called, and I will not pronounce this correctly, uh, but I'm going to go for it, uh, the hal- halomonas? Yeah. That's not right. Mm-hmm. That's correct. Halomonas? Halomonas Titanica. Which Damn, is, it's named after the Titanic? I feel like it might be named after it. I could be Must wrong, be. though. I'm probably pronouncing that super wrong, so I'm sorry, you guys. Um, and it's slowly consuming the remains of the ship. It is expect it is expected to complete be completely gone by two twenty thirty, so wow. hashtag thirty ish. Every time, what <laughs> the fuck? It's like we know. Yeah, but I mean that's that's eleven years and it'll be gone. It, it, so they say it's like deteriorating Do rapidly people, now. Can you like take a tour of the shipwreck? I swear we're just sure like simpatico. Can. I'm going to get to that. Okay, good. Well, time out because I have to pee. Okay. Well, I'm actually almost done. 
Okay. I'm literally almost done. Okay. So, okay. Because we are just like fucking meant to be. Um, so if you want to take a tour of the t- Titanic, um, it is just a, introducing the next. Yeah, <laughs> it is a 13 day total trek deal. Wow. So, but that's like from like going from like I believe it's like to from going from Newfoundland to getting on the boat, then to getting out to the to the site where you're gonna dive. But and but they, they give you six actual whole days of going and diving down there, like up and down all the time. I mean, that's a fucking big ass boat. Yeah. So I mean, I think it takes a couple hours to get down, and then they said that they're you're gonna be down there for twelve hours at a time. Do you like? And they give you lectures and stuff like that, so they're gonna give you history. Are you? You're in a submarine? No. No, you're just in a bodysuit. Yes, you're in a fucking submarine. <laughs> Yeah, so you go down there because again, like that's stupid. that's what made me fascinated about it was in 1985 when it was just like, oh my god, that's just like my nightmare. Like I have a I I have a weird thing about flying, but being in a submarine where like if a screw blows, you're that's... done in in a fraction of a second. I mean, it, I mean honestly, you won't feel it; you'll be dead. So I don't know how big these subs are now, but like I can't think about like doing for six days being twelve hours in that tiny submarine. That would just yeah, drive me crazy. If you're if you have six days to fucking explore the Titanic, you must be going in side. You're probably going maybe I don't know I don't know if they can go in because it might be like not structured. Especially if it only has like eleven That's years to be scary. stable. They might have like like I I don't know how real like the robots are in comparison to James Cameron's version, where if they have like a separate little guy that can go in that is if it gets crushed it's there's nobody in it um i'm, I'm not sure quite sure that shit. but um i want you to guess how much though how the much tour is how much the tour 13 is? days for 13 days fifteen thousand dollars okay okay so for the measly price of fifty nine six hundred thousand dollars fifty nine thousand that's correct I said 15. I know. That's why I was like not going to give you any <laughs> hints. $59,000. And um, the trip can be yours. Airport, airfare not included. So you got to get to Newfoundland on your other dime. But well, I mean, everything else. You're going down in some submarines like two and a half feet down in the ocean. I mean, honestly, that's you insane, might as well though. just go to the goddamn moon. Yeah. Or, just, or just, just, just wait for. $60,000. Just wait for Uber airfare because that's probably how it's going to cost. It is anyway. 13 days though. Thirteen for fifty nine thousand dollars. People are fucking rich, Shay. I don't know. I can't even. That just that. But you know, if you don't want to go on the dive and you just want to tag along, it's only gotten to cost you two ten thousand dollars. Ten thousand dollars just to tag along and not even go on the dives, just to hang out on the boat. Stupid. To hang on the boat to not see the Titanic <laughs> underneath the ocean. Yeah, which I'm wondering. The ocean. Which I'm wondering if how real these things are though, because. It was, like, through a legitimate site and everything else. But um, there was another article that was saying, like, the first manned um, deep sea dive in, like, 13 years. And I wanted to be like, oh, so they, I guess they haven't any, had any takers on that $59,000 yeah. fucking bullshit. Yeah. So that was my kind of quick history jaunt of the Titanic. So. It was really. Hopefully it was, it was informative. It was, I didn't know that shit. It was super. I mean, I probably could have been a lot more detailed, but I just wanted to get that one out of the way because I, I just, you I wanted I. to do it. Yeah. Yeah. That was a nice little it was nugget a, of info. It, it was, it was a nugget, wasn't it? It was a big nugget. Yeah. But anyway, so yeah, it was like a little first good history, whatever, because everyone kind of knows that one a little bit, but maybe hopefully I gave you something that you didn't know. Who knows? Some, I, you definitely did for me. Mm-hmm. Sweet. Fucking rich people. Rich people. Fucking it up. Just Sailing kidding. on boats. It's good. We're all going to be rich people. I'm going to be, we're going to be rich people soon. Anyway. Anyway, what? Uh, um, do you want to just roll for this? this yeah, week? I guess. I think, I think it's time to roll, Shay. I think it's, I think it's time to roll. Um, good thing you have your little altar of Rocco's Modern Life people in your uh, dice over there. They hold the energy for the dice. Let's be honest. They, do. they hold it. They do. They hold the right energy. They do. I don't know why. I'm sure like. Our listeners are like, uh, you should know which fucking number it is now we at don't. this point. We're like, we don't. You guys probably do, but we don't. Okay, and I need to put this down. Okay. Chinyway, here we go. Chinyway. Chinyway. Um. All right, here we go. One. 
Nostalgia. What? What? Oh shit! I'm super excited. Okay. Second favorite. Second favorite. All right. What's my first? Five. History. One, two, three, four. Science. Oh, science. Mm-hmm. I know what I'm gonna talk about. <laughs> Does it involve trees? Uh, or it might. Greta? It might. Okay, that's fine. Get it, girl. It's, it's your favorite might. one. You it's love science. Much. Anyway. Anyway. So, guys, what's up? You know who it is. It's Brie. It's your girl Brie. I like it's how you your get girl Shay. Super ah. sensual with it. You're like, hey, girls. Hello. It's what up, ladies <laughs> or men? I don't know. I don't know. What up, party people? <laughs> it's Brie. If you guys want to uh, follow us on Instagram, that'd be great. You know where you can find us. It's T H U R D Y I S H. Um, let us know if you want us to do anything special for you. If you want to tell us how you. Th- how you feel about us? We're available for kids' parties as well. We are. We're available. Um, we won't dress as clowns. No, sure won't. We'll just dress as ourselves. We'll just drunk dress as, their, as your drunk aunt. It'll be great. Mm-hmm. If you need to hire a drunk aunt, Briante's here and so is Shay. There it is. <laughs> um, so, anyways, <laughs> back to the other things. Um, yeah, we love that you guys are fucking listening and we love you. And if you're new, Hello. I hope you liked it. And tell your friends about us if you want. Give us a little beep if you see our cars driving around town. (laughs) Um, Oh, today, that reminds me. um, On my way here, I kind of got catcalled, I think. I don't know if I did. because I was sprinting, jaywalking across the street while running. Mm -hmm. And I was walking to my car, running, walking. Whatever. And some meat cake whatever i what did i call them the other day i don't know but i'm gonna call it a meat you mean beef cake yeah no but you meant you call it a meat cake you call it something you call it like i accidentally called it something yeah it's okay i called it a dick want oh a dick want some fucking dick want leaned out of his (laughs) whole window with his giant gross tattooed muscles they were gross muscles, Those, not good ones. Yeah, not good ones. And he was like, yes, yeah, all right. And I was like, okay, listen to 30-ish. <laughs> Did you see my sticker? <laughs> anyway, so don't cat call us, but you can, <laughs> you can honk. <laughs> or be like, yeah, don't sound like you're gargling screws. No, but, I was like, I almost got hit by your car, so maybe you were just telling me. They probably were telling me to get the fuck out of the road. Sweet. Probably. But you just didn't know I, how to articulate it. I was definitely getting cat called. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> by an actual cat. <laughs> am I getting cat called? Oh, I am. That's a cat in the it's bushes. It's just a lion Perfect. stalking me. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> okay. Hashtag follow us. Hashtag we love you. We'll see you next hashtag week. Hashtag maybe we'll With more make facts maybe? Free. I don't know. Oh, yeah, we should. We'll make t-shirts someday. We should. We'll, All right. We'll do it. Well, we love you. I'll see you later, Jay. I'll see you in a minute, Brie. Oh, yeah, because I'm still going to be here. Okay, bye. Okay, bye.